Well, good morning. My name is Jim Breer. I'm the president and CEO of Veriflow. Very excited to be here. Uh, this is an exciting forum, and I'm, I'm looking forward to an exciting next couple hours. What I thought I'd do is start with just a quick overview of who we are, how we got here, and a little high level on the technology itself. Uh, obviously, I won't go too deep because uh, we've got uh, the rest of the team to give a lot of detail around the technology. So let's start with a little bit about the, the company. So for those that don't know, we were um, founded uh, at the University of Illinois. Uh, both Bre Brighton and Matter, who are here today, are founders. They were PhDs at Berkeley, went on to become professors at the University of Illinois. That's where they began uh, talking about this concept that matured from an academic concept into some papers that eventually then moved to uh, the incubator and was uh, eventually formed as Veriflow. Um, I joined about two years ago to help commercialize the company. And since then, uh, the way we, we started was there initially was a grant from NSF. We then got funding from the Department of Defense. And then there was a seed financing from NEA, who I'm sure you know is a very well-known uh, VC here in the Valley. Um, about uh, April of last year, we came out of stealth mode, launched the company. We then did a, a fundraiser for our A round in July, a little over a year ago, and raised our first uh, large round of capital. Uh, and then we launched the product officially last November. And since then, we've now uh, been uh, developing the company. We started to go to market uh, a little earlier this year. And uh, maybe I can tell you a little bit more about that. So in a pretty short amount of time, we think we've done pretty good uh, in terms of gaining uh, visibility to the technology and the ideas. Uh, we've had some uh, media and analyst review and talk about what we've done. But in a, in a, as I mentioned before, in a pretty short amount of time, we now have a handful of customers and a pretty significant amount of trials underway. And they cross many different disciplines. So it's not that we're just focused on enterprises or data centers or service providers or federal government. We actually are, have customers that, are, that span both DOD, tier one service providers. We have, you know, uh, banking, lots of different enterprise verticals. We're not just in the data center, we're in the wide area, we're in campuses, uh, in the uh, tier one uh, infrastructure for, mo uh, for operators. So it's been pretty applicable, applicable across many verticals. Um, so if I could go to the next slide, <clears throat> what do we do? So what, what our goal is to eliminate outages and vulnerabilities in networks. That's really what, what our mission is. And you know, simply, what, what we're trying to do is predict the future. What we want to do is tell you what's going to happen on the network before it happens. And by the way, we're going to do that without looking at traffic. And, and by the way, we're a networking company. You might have saw on the last slide, we do have use cases that are security related, and we were active at RSA uh, this year. But we're really a networking company at heart. So, as you can imagine, networks are massively complex to the point now where if it's a carrier network, if it's 5G network, if it's a uh, large campus, a large data center, the network is so complex that it's almost more complex than a human can c contemplate. And you take this complexity, right, and then you add what we call changes. I'm sure you know this, that most outages and vulnerabilities are due to changes make a mistake, human, human errors. Uh, if you think about it, uh, I think, if you think about changes, there's big changes, like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build, I'm gonna go to the cloud, or I'm gonna segment the network, or do micro-segmentation. Then there's medium changes, architectural changes, and then there's small changes. And when I talk about small changes, I mean, I'm gonna upgrade software, add a router, change an ACL. These are the changes that happen every day. It's, it's very common, if you spoke to a large enterprise, such as a, a bank or a service provider, they're doing hundreds, if not thousands, of changes a month. So you know, when you think about then this massive complexity, and then you add all this change, that's what we're trying to solve. That's where we see the opportunity to try to help in that area. So there's, there really isn't been a good way to solve this. You, know, you can think of it when you go and talk to a CIO or a VP of network, they have giant maps, Visio diagrams, they have spreadsheets of trying to document what does the network look like? What is the current state of the network? But it, it's not 
it's always out of date. On top of that, you have change processes. You know, there's people that um, you're going to make a change on Sunday, and you have to go through a, a, a painful paralysis-ridden process. Everybody has to sign on the dotted line and say, okay, guys, we're going to make a change next Sunday. We're going to upgrade iOS. And everybody has to sign it because no one wants to be responsible for that change because it can inevitably lead to an outage where you're at, you know, sleepless Sunday night hoping that no one on Monday calls you and says, hey, I can't get access to a critical server. So, you know, that doesn't really work well well. There's other solutions and ways to do it, but there really isn't anything that's really addressing the issues. So, I'm not sure if you've heard of the concept formal verification. It's a, uh, it's a methodology. It's a well-known methodology used in a lot of mature industries. Uh, it basically uses math to identify errors. You know, so for example, uh, Intel. Intel, when they go out to design a new Xeon chip, they use formal verification to think of all the probabilities, combinations, all the issues that could happen before they fab. Because you can imagine the cost associated with, with uh, errors in a chip. So that's a concept of formal verification. It's used in flight simulation software. It's used in at NASA for predicting uh, issues. It's a well-known. This, is the, this was the thesis, this was the idea that the founders came up with, was why hasn't anybody ever used a well-known method called formal verification and applied that to networks? And that's what the, the original uh, paper was written on, and that's what it's grown up to become Veriflow. And, and Brighton, will, Brighton and Matt and uh, Saji will take you through exactly the details of how all this works. So again, at a very high level, you know, what we do, okay, is this concept of formal verification is, where do we live? We live within layers one through four. So we're, we're verifying and, and living inside of routers, routers, switches, firewalls, load balancers, access points, virtualized, legacy, it doesn't matter. And you can see on the bottom, we verify all sorts of different vendors, right? We're multi-vendor. On the right, imagine that's a router, okay, or a, a networking device. And what we do is we, we go beyond, we look at the configurations, but we go deeper, but actually into the data plane, in the, in the state of the device. And we're looking at very low level information, which is what we call the reality of what's going to happen. This is where you know, the forwarding tables are. This is where the router gets instructions to do something. That's where we, where we get our information. And we'll talk about that in detail uh, with Brighton. So, and then how does it work? Uh, basically what we do is we're a uh, software in a VM, we actually have two VMs, and that is uh, sent out to all the networking devices, your network, we extract very low information, bring that back into our central engine, and that, at that point we then model all the traffic and normalize it, as if it's one singular system, rather than, oh that's a Juniper, that's a F5, we take all that and normalize it. We then build a, a visualization of, of your network map, a dynamic map. And it's, it's not just a physical map of the network, it's also the functional network. And we're gonna go into detail, because this is quite unique. This gives you this view of how the network really will operate. And then at the same time, we're going and doing thousands of checks. Since we have all the information, we're now checking and coming back and then presenting the state of your network and the health of your network. You know, is it resilient? Are you protected, et cetera? And we'll go into detail exactly what we mean. And then from there, you can also add and start to customize additional ways to look at the network. So again, very high level, and we're gonna go in detail about that later. So what are we launching today? So we're here to talk about our software, but we also, for those who don't know, we put out a press release this morning, very excited to announce our next version of software that includes a bunch of new features. These features were brought to us in our, on our relationships and conversations with, with our customers and prospects. And listening to these customers and asking what did they want, what did they need, these are the things that we, we thought were important, starting with what we call Cloud Predict. This is a technology that basically allows you to get visibility, no differently than you do on your enterprise, into the Amazon Cloud, okay? Second is we've got this automated intent inference. I talked about this idea of being able to infer information on the correct of the network 
and tell you that. We're going to go in deep detail about that as well. And this is very unique. And by the way, all this is patented. Uh, Pre-flight, otherwise known as what if. When you're thinking about making changes, there's kind of this planning phase. There's execution phase. This is the opportunity in a planning phase to, to do what if testing on what will happen if. And lastly, we've built a what we call a diff capability to really be able to look at snapshots of the network and compare and contrast over time. So why are we here? Why does this matter? Who cares about network verification? In our minds, this is a major, major opportunity. Uh, think about all the outages oh, just last year alone. I think it was $700 billion, okay, massive numbers. You see this uh, quote from Amazon that, you know, one click costs them $150 million. That's very minimal compared to other instances. What we're really talking about is change-induced incidents. What we're focused on is how can we help large networks reduce change-induced incidents, reduce and automate a lot of costs that are currently spent doing things in the network that a device or technology like this could provide. 